Hello! In this video, I would like to talk about some mathematical tools that are needed to study probability theory. In particular, since probability theory uses the language of sets, I briefly review some concepts from set theory. I talk about sets, unions, intersections, partitions, and so on. And I also talk about countable and uncountable sets. And at the end, I briefly talk about functions. If you already know all of these material, you might skip this video and go directly to the next one. Okay, what is a set? A set is a collection of things or elements. For example, I might decide to define a set A that uh, consists of two elements, happy face and a sad face. And that's how we list the elements in a set. We put them in curly brackets. Um, uh, to say that the happy face belongs to A, I use this notation. That means happy face belongs to A. And to say that, uh, for example, I don't know, the angry face if this is the angry face, does not belong to A, we write it like this. And of course, we might define a set B in probability theory. We might define a set as heads and tails. Um, and of course, we work with sets of numbers. You know, you can define any sets you want. Uh, one, two, three. And note that the ordering does not matter. So this is the same as three, two, one. These are the same sets. And also, repetition is not allowed. So if I write one, one, two, three is the same set. If I want to have two different ones, we, we have to distinguish them somehow. And, you know, uh, there are some important sets, such as the set of uh, natural numbers, one, two, three, and so on. And the set of integers. Um, another important set is the set of real numbers. And that's a set consisting of all the elements on the real lines. Um, we sometimes are interested in uh, intervals in uh, on real numbers. For example, an interval from zero to 1, let's say this is an interval I am interested in. Um, so I show it by uh, putting this uh, 0 and 1 in brackets. So this is the set of all real numbers between 0 and 1. So we can define it as x, the set of all x's in the real, uh, in the set of real numbers, such that x is between 0 and 1. And note that 0 and 1 are included in the set. If I want to exclude them, uh, I, for example, if I want to ex exclude 1, I change the bracket to a parenthesis. So this is the set of all x that are in the real line. Uh, x is larger than 0, but less than 1. And when we want to show it on the real line, um, if this is 0, this is 1, then uh, we include 0, but we don't fill the circle on 1. Similarly, you can define the set uh, between 0 and 1. This set includes 1, but does not include 0. And this set does not include 0, does not include 1. Now let's talk about subsets. Set A is a subset of set B if every element of A is an element of B. So if A is 1 and 2, and B is 1, 2, 3, of course, A is a subset of B. And that's the notation that we use for that. Now, how do we say uh, two sets are equal? Two sets are equal uh, if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, which means that they have the same elements. Okay. So another interesting concept is the concept of the universal set. The universal set is the set of everything that we consider in a problem. Um, depending on the problem, the universal set can be defined differently. Uh, in probability, we usually show the universal uh, set by S uh, because, you know, the universal set in a probability theory is the sample space. We will talk about it later on. And some people show it by omega. Now, for example, if your problem is just rolling a die, then you might define the sample space or the universal set as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because, and 6, because that includes all the elements you are interested in. Um, the empty set is the set that, you know, does not have any elements. We also call it the null set. Um, okay, so, and a very useful tool is a Venn diagram. We show as every set by a closed region uh, or on the plane. For example, here, this closed, uh, you know, rectangle, this rectangle, the area in the rectangle shows the sample space or the universal set. If I want to add a set, this set A uh, is, can be shown by this closed uh, surface, uh, and, you know, I can have another set B, and so on. Uh, let's talk about some, you know, set operations. For example, union. So the union of uh, set A and B, we show it by this, is another set that includes all the elements that are either in A or B or possibly both. For example, if this is A and this is B, then their union is basically this area on the plane. And how about intersection? Inter so intersection of A and B, we show it by this. Uh, 
is another set that includes the elements that are both in A and uh, B. So if this is A and this is B, the intersection is this area. Okay? So basically, intersection is the same as AND, elements that are both in A and B, but union is the same as OR, which means that the, uh, it's a set of elements that are uh, either uh, in A or in B, or both. So the complement of the set A, which we show usually by A complement or A bar, is a set of all elements that are uh, uh, not in A, but they are in the universal set. So in this case, this area shows A complement, because it shows all the elements that are not in A. Well, how do I define a difference between two sets? If this is A, and this is another set B, then A minus B is a set of all elements that are in A, but are not in B. For example, here is like this. So, if I, you know, say A is equal to 1, 2, 3, or well, let's say A is equal to 1, 2, let's uh, make it simple, B is equal to 2, 3, then A union B is A 1, 2, 3, right? Because it's uh, sort of all elements that are uh, either in A or B. A intersection with B is just 2, because the, the only element that is in common is 2. And finally, A minus B is what? Well, 1 is in A, but it's not in B, so 1 is there. 2 is in A, but also is in B, so it does not belong to A minus B. So that's it. So that's A minus B. Okay, so let's talk about disjoint sets. Disjoint sets are sets that do not have any elements in common. For example, this is if this is the set A, and this is in set B, these two are disjoint. Or if I want to add another disjoint set, C. Okay, so basically, A intersection with B is empty. Okay, partition. Uh, so I can partition a set. What it means is that basically I divide it to different sets, such that a1 union A2 union A3 is equal to A, and they are disjoint. So to be partitioned, a collection of sets must be disjoint, and their union must be uh, the equal to the set A. Uh, we are usually interested in the partition of the sample space. So if this is our sample space, uh, we can have a partition of the sample space like this. Okay, there are two useful rules when we're working with sets. Uh, the first one is the Morgan's law, and the second one is the distributive law. De Morgan's law says that if you have, for example, A union B, you want to complement that, what you do is that you look at A complement intersection with B complement. And the similar rule applies to uh, A intersection with B complement is the same as A complement union B complement. Uh, the distributive law basically says that A intersection with B union C is equal to A intersection B union A intersection C. Uh, we will have an example to practice these. Okay, so let's uh, work on some examples to make sure that you understand all of these. This is, the first one is very simple. Uh, I suggest that you stop the video and solve it before uh, watching the rest of the video. Okay, so let's solve this problem. Um, okay, so we have a, a sample space S, uh, or the universal set S, A, the set B, and the set C. The first question asks you what is uh, basically uh, a union B, well, what are the elements in A? 1, 2, B is 2, 4, 5, so A union B is 1, 2, 4, 5. Okay, so the second question is A intersection with B. So again, the only elements that is uh, common in A and B here is just 2, right? So this is just 2. Now what is A complement here? A complement is, is, uh, consists of all the elements that are in S but are not in B, uh, which is going to be 3, 4, 5, 6. How about B complement? Uh, same thing is 1, 3, and I guess 6. The second to last question asks for checking the Morgan's law by finding these two. Well, we have we already found A intersection with B is uh, here. So its complement is going to be uh, basically 3 and 6. Now, what is A complement? A complement is uh, here. 3, 4, 5, 6. What is B complement is 1, 3, 6. Their intersection is just 3 and 6. So again, this becomes 3 and 6, and these two are equal. Now, the last one, it asks you to check that uh, in the distributive law. Uh, again, B union C. What is B union C? B is, one, uh, B is 2, 4, 5. C is 1, 5, 6. So B union C is 
1, 2, 4, 5, 6, right? What is A? A is 1 and 2. So if you look at their intersection, you get 1 and 2. Now, what is A intersection with B? A intersection with B just is just element 2. How about A and C? Uh, the only element that they have in common is 1. So this becomes 1 and 2. And we see that these two are equal. So we check that. Now let's look at a little bit more complicated problem. Uh, so this problem asks about infinite intersections. Now we can extend the definition similarly to the case when we have infinitely many sets. Here I define a1 to be the set, the, uh, the interval from 0 to 1, a2 the interval from 0 to 1 half, and so on. In general, a n is defined to be the interval, interval from 0 to 1 over n. And the question is, what is this? a1 intersection uh, with uh, a2 intersection with a3 and so on. By the way, a notation that we usually use for that, for this, is uh, intersection from 1 to infinity a n. This is the same thing, just uh, writing it uh, in a compact way. So the question is, what is this inter intersection? Again, I ask you to stop the video and solve it before look at the solution. Okay, so let's solve this problem. Um, well, maybe it's a good idea to uh, just look at this uh, a1, a2, a3, and see what they are. Um, let's say this is 0, and this is 1, uh, this is 1 half, this is 1 third, and so on. So if you look at a1, a1 is a set of all elements from 0 to 1, a2 from 0 to 1 half, a3 from 0 to 1 third, and so on. Now, as you see, this value here is 1 over n, right, for a n. Now, this 1 over n gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So, if you choose any epsilon larger than 0, then uh, for large n, then 1 over n becomes less than epsilon. So, no epsilon larger than 0 belongs to the intersection of these sets. Remember, an element belongs to the intersection of some sets when uh, it belongs to all of them, right? So, if x belongs to a1 intersection, a2, inter so on, it must belong to all of them. But if x is positive, it cannot belong to this. So the only element that uh, these sets have in common is actually 0. So in fact, we can write uh, the answer to this question is the set that consists of the element 0. No other element can be in this set. Um, so that was a little bit trickier than the previous one. But the idea is just using the definition of intersection. Okay. So I want to talk about another concept here. And that's the, the concept of the cardinality, which means the number of elements in a set. So, uh, first of all, if I have a finite set, the cardinality is very simple, right? The notation that we use is this. Uh, the cardinality of A is the number of elements in a set. So, if, for example, if A is, I don't know, 1 and 2, then, of course, there are two elements in it, so its cardinal, cardinality is 2. But what about when A is infinity, is an infinite set? Then, well... Of course, its cardinality is infinity in some sense, but we need to distinguish between different kinds of infinity. Basically, there are two kinds of them. Um, some, uh, the first kind is the smaller one, uh, is like a set of natural numbers, one, two, three. This set, we call them countable sets, sets like this. And the sets like the, uh, the intervals in the real line, these are much bigger sets. We call them uncountable. Uh, if you want a more uh, accurate definition, here's the definition. Uh, if you can list the elements in a set A, that is, you can write A equals, I don't know, like here, 1, 2, 3, 4, or whatever, A1, A2, A3, then that set is countable. So, of course, any finite set is countable because you can list the elements in a set. The set of natural numbers is countable because I can write the set of natural numbers is, you know, this is a list of elements, 1, 2, 3. Uh, the set of integers is also countable because I can write z is equal to 0, minus 1 plus 1, minus 2 plus 2, and so on. Uh, the set of rational numbers is also countable, which is shown by q. Remember, q is the set of a over b, such that a belongs to um, z and b belongs to z minus 0, right? So basically, the number is like 2 over 3 and so on. This is the set of catch rational numbers. Now, uh, I claim that I can list all the elements in Q. How do I do that? Well, this is one way of doing it. Um, basically, I can say that this is this table lists all the elements in Q because remember, in every Q element in Q is uh, in form of A over B. So if I like uh, have a two-dimensional table, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here, and then each in each uh, cell I put, for example, here, let's, 
I look at the number here and the number here and then I put 4 over 3 uh, then this is a list of all rational numbers all I need to do is just find an ordering for them so that I can list them here's one way of doing this I go from here to here then I put this element in the list then I put this element in the list then I put this element in the list okay and so on um, so you can you can see that you can list all the elements in the uh, queue now as I said there are the set of real numbers or any interval in the uh, real numbers uh, uh, basically is uncountable uh, which means that you cannot list the elements uh, in these sets um, uh, so um, you know let, let me make it simple for you uh, in probability theory you know all you need to know is that sets such as you know the natural numbers uh, integers rationals and so on are countable and any set that is a subset of them or similar to them in the sense that you can put it in one-to-one -one correspondence so any set that you can list like if I define a set as I don't know uh, let's say I have a set two four six and so on because I can list all the elements is a countable set and any set that has an interval in it right three and four or I don't know one over two two 2 over 3, all of these sets are uncountable. So that's all you need to know in, as far as probability is concerned. And, and of course more detail is described in the book, so if you're interested. In. And finally I want to spend a few minutes to talk about functions. We are familiar with the concept of functions, you know, for example f of x is equal to x squared. Uh, this is a function. So what is a function? A function in general uh, is a rule or mapping. You know, what happens is that you give it a value, this is function, and it returns uh, some values. In this case, uh, it returns x squared. So you can say that the function is basically a rule that takes an element from a set, in this case, it takes an element from the real line, and returns an element from the real line. Now, these two sets could be any sets, right? So in general, we, we say that f is a mapping from a set a to a set b, such that if you take any elements in a, then uh, it's f of x belongs to the set b okay for example let's say a is a set heads or tails heads and tails and b is the set one zero and one then i can define a function g from a to b as follows i say g of h is equal to zero and g of t, t is equal to 1. And that's a valid definition because I have only two elements in the set A. All I need to do to determine the uh, function g is to say what is g of h and what is g of t. Um, so this set is said to be domain. It's a domain of the function. And this is codomain. Now, another concept that is uh, interesting is the range of the function. Range of f is all possible values of f. Uh, for example, in the case of f in the example above, we define f of x is equal to x squared. Now, uh, what is the range of f here? x squared is always positive, but all positive values are covered by f. So we can say range of f is a set of all positive real numbers. So it's x in R such that x is positive. Okay, so that's the definition of the range of a function. And if I want to show a picture of it, so if this is set A and this is set B, then any point in A is mapped to f of x, which is in the range. So range is always a subset of the codomain B. Okay, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. Thank you.